Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. It's that time of year again. They're bringing back the shore living and the beach items at Dollar Tree. And I have got you set with 10 DIYs from the Dollar Tree shore living line. So this one, we're going to use one of the little galvanized metal seashells from the Dollar Tree. And then one of these little signs, this is kind of beachy, as you can see. Um, but it's actually just from the regular like decor department at Dollar Tree. Um, it's not something that that's with the shore living line, but I guess it could be. But I am just actually going to redo it completely and kind of make it my own. And I always like to work on the back of the Dollar Tree projects because it kind of gives you like a blank canvas to kind of start off with. So all I did was just remove the tag on the back there. And then we're going to kind of tape off this little bottom section here. And I'm going to show you how I kind of combine these two items together to make a really cute little beach decoration. So the first thing we're going to do is paint this. I am actually mixing two colors together. This is like Caribbean blue and ivory mixed together. And it's going to give me that really soft beachy blue, which is kind of what I'm going for with this project right here on the top. Now here is the little galvanized metal shell. I never know quite what to do with these things because um, they're usually like a hanging item and sometimes you don't want them to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to cover up the little holes there in the metal part of the shell with just some masking tape. I thought that might work a little bit better than trying to spackle like that thin metal. I don't think that would work at all. So we're going to give that a go. And I want to use a chalk paint because I want really good coverage. So I'm just using some ivory chalk paint and going all over. I also kind of wanted like a thicker paint like this um, to give me a little bit of texture because again, we're trying to cover up like the masking tape that we use to cover the holes. And you know, we want to give it texture because the seashell is going to definitely have texture more so than just the like the lines in there. And so we're gonna paint that all over, basically painting it the same color as my mat. So it's a little hard to see there, sorry about that. Give it a quick dry and I'm gonna go over it with just a little bit more. Um, you can paint this galvanized metal. It's usually not my first idea, but I think it made it look a lot better than it would have looked if I would have left it like that metal color. Now I wanna spell out my own word on here. And so I'm gonna use some of these little galvanized metal letters from the Dollar Tree to spell it out. They're just the right size. Now you have to be careful when you buy these at the Crafter Square at Dollar Spot because you're only getting half the alphabet when you do the metal. So I just am gonna spell out the word beach and I kinda of wanna do the same thing that I did on the metal shell. So just painting them all over with ivory chalk paint. And so we have like that wood base that's really pretty on that sign and the light blue sign and then our little metal seashell and our letters painted ivory. I do want them to look a little distressed though. So just going over everything with Antique Wax by Waverly and it gives me that cool texture and um, color that you would see like on a real seashell. Now I've done this technique on a plastic um, shore living dish as well, and that's really going to give you the texture to make it look real. This one doesn't look, you know, it doesn't really look like a real shell, but it looks cool. And I'm going to go ahead and distress the letters as well. If you ever feel like you distress too much, you can go back a little bit with your original color, which mine was ivory, distress it a little more to brighten it up. So we have our little blue sign. I'm going to kind of try to find the center just so I can center um, my center letter. That's going to help me a little bit with spacing. And I'm just going to attach those to that base with glue. I like that wood grain. I think that looks really nice and beachy already. So we're just going to glue our letters on here. You could spell out whatever you want. 
Um, using this size letter, though, you're not going to have a lot of room for a very big word. And if you wanted, you could use, like, th the other side did have, like, a beachy saying on it as well. I wanted mine to be a little bit simpler with just the word beach. So that looks pretty good. Now I think we can just put this thing together. So I'm just going to use hot glue to attach the little metal shell to the sign. And I know a lot of people say you can't hot glue um, the metal, but really just be careful because the metal gets hot. But otherwise, it's pretty sturdy. I'm also going to put a little glue in the back and a little wood domino from the Dollar Tree just to give me something to glue to to make sure it stays on. And this is how it turned out, our little uh, beach sign. So cute. You can do so many things with these shore living items. I was really excited today about finding shore living items about how many new things they have this year. So this is an item they've had every year for my shore living. This is my third year getting um, shore living. I know a lot of you guys, it's just your second. I think um, my store was a test store the first year and um, I bought all that stuff up. So you're welcome. <laughs> that means that they said, hey, let's carry this stuff every year <laughs> at all the stores, right? So I'm just going to use a wood round and a little captain's wheel. This DIY is so cute um, that I leave it up pretty much year round. I love it. And I'm going to do the same thing we did with the blue paint mixing Caribbean blue and ivory together to give me this very soft blue. I have found this color in acrylic paint. At, I think at Walmart, I believe, and I think it was called Cloudless and like their cheaper, I think, apple barrel paint. Um, if you don't want to mix it and you want to get that soft color of blue for your sign. But basically, just going over the whole thing in blue. And then I'm going to go back and distress that with just some ivory acrylic and a chunky brush. Um, follow that up with a baby wipe. It's going to give me that cool blue distress look that looks really beachy. And gives it a little bit more of that coastal farmhouse character. Now, I want to frame this out just because it's going to give it like a, you know, coastal beachy feel with the Dollar Tree brown rope. But, you know, it's also going to um, make it thicker and a little bit more substantial because, you know, that's one thing I don't like about Dollar Tree signs is that they're so thin. So I'm just going to simply hot glue this rope all the way around. This is the thinner one, but you could use whatever you have. It would look really cute with white rope on there as well, if that's the only one you've got as well. But I, you know I always love a good rope frame. It's going to give a little character to this. And this wood round from the Dollar Tree is just the perfect size for this um, to do kind of a layered project with the little captain's wheel. going to burn off any of the fuzzies that we have on there and clean it up a little bit. And now we can start painting this. Now, I wanted a really light stain um, on the ship wheel. And so I'm going to try to get that by using um, ivory paint mixed with the Antique Wax by Waverly and see what kind of stain we can get here. I probably used too much paint because as you can see, this first coat is very like tan, um, not really wood so much, but it is going to give me a good base coat for going in with just Antique Wax by Waverly. And then I'm going all over and I want to give it that like really kind of weathered wood look that you would see on an old ship wheel. So just working in one direction, I'm going to distress all over, um, kind of concentrating on the edges of all the cutouts too to bring a little character into that. I follow it up with a um, baby wipe and then another coat of Antique Wax by Waverly until I am happy with the finish that I get. It turned out pretty cool. I just didn't really want it to be like a dark stain, which is one reason why I went over it with the lighter paint mixed with ivory first. Now it's time to decorate this guy. I'm going to use some of that thicker twine that you get in that big roll at Walmart. It's a little thicker than the twine that you're going to get at Dollar Tree, but you could get the same effect with it too. You're just going to have to wind it around more. But basically, I wanted to go around every single one of the little handles on the ship wheel with the twine 
just starting it with a dot of hot glue, cutting it down to size, and finishing it with a dot of hot glue as well. So this is going to add, you know, a little bit of substance to the thin, um, you know, captain's wheel and make it look really cute. And it's going to, you know, really give you that coastal vibe too, along with the rope border, because we are going to kind of shadow box, um, sit this on top of the wood round that we did. But first we have to get all of these covered. Okay, looking good, looking good. I'm just gonna go around with my lighter real quick and burn off all the fuzzies because that twine from the Walmart can be a little rough as well. I'm gonna go ahead and reattach my hanger that came with the wood round just by sliding the little pegs back in. And, and now I think that we can put this together. I wanted to just sit out from the sign. So I'm using one of those wood rings from the Dollar Tree. I love those, they're so cool. Um, and I'm gonna try to just put it in the very center of my sign. And then when I glue it down to the sign, I can then go in and glue the little ship wheel on top of it. You won't even be able to see it because there's like a hole in the middle of the ship wheel, but it's also gonna make it like stand out and give it kind of like a 3D effect from the sign. Whatever I can do to make a Dollar Tree sign project thicker, I always try to do that for sure. I think they look better. So just attaching that with hot glue and see how that's a perfect fit back there. Serves its job and you can't even see it. Now it's time to decorate it a little bit more. I thought seashells would be the perfect decoration between each rung of the little ship wheel. And so I'm just going through my stash of seashells from the Dollar Tree. And I don't really care if they're the same color, but I do kind of want them to be the same, you know, kind of shell. So just picking out, I think these are all like scallop shells. And then we're just gonna glue these all the way around. Whenever I glue down shells, I really just do like a thin bead on the outer edge of the shell. And sometimes a little dot on the base. Um, I find that works really well. You don't want to use too much because you don't want it coming out all over the place. And isn't this cute? I absolutely love how this sign turned out. I'm actually looking at it right now as I record this. <laughs> now I wanted to do like a bow on this, but I didn't want to do anything too um, frou-frou on this. And so I thought some of this like net ribbon from the Dollar Tree would be kind of cute to do like a cool little bow because I think it looks like fishing net kind of, especially when it's all like going every direction. It's got that really cool texture. So um, it's really simple. I'm just gonna do loops, joining it in the middle, cutting off another piece for a tail. I did like two loops on each side and then I'm just gonna use a zip tie to attach that to the existing hanger of the wood round and very easy because you don't have to worry about like an up or a down on this and no patterns or anything like that to follow. So I'm just gonna shape it a little bit once I get it tied on there. And I think this goes really nicely with the beach, beachy effect. And then the last step is I just kinda wanna cover up that zip tie that I used. So I'm just gonna take some Dollar Tree twine and kinda tie that around there a few times just to cover that up a little bit. And that's all there is to this DIY. This is how it looks hanging in my home. And I think it's really cute. I really love the colors. That bright blue is a nice surprise through there. And I love all of the little added details of the seashells. You can get some pretty cool looking shells from the Dollar Tree. Okay, next you're living DIY. I picked up one of these little home signs from the Dollar Tree that has the little sand dollar on there uh, made out of like, cardboard wood. Um, I thought it would be prettier if it was like a more realistic looking sand dollar. So I'm just gonna use some heat and try to pop this off without causing too much damage with the paper that's on there. I love the color of the sign and I love a blue sign with white. I think it looks really beachy, but I thought we could give it a slight makeover. I did notice that it was tearing the paper. So I'm just gonna try to cut that off there at the base so I can do as little damage as possible. 
Um, I do want to kind of glue that back down now. So I am going to use some of that spray adhesive from the Dollar Tree and just kind of try to glue that down a little bit, even though our new sand dollar won't cover all of that up. But isn't that a pretty sign? I think it's really pretty to start with. Now, my first plan was to use some of the little Shore Living sand dollars, and you totally could. It'd be really cute if you did. Let me show you what that's gonna look like. The only thing I thought, it was a little bit smaller than the letters, um, and I did have some real sand dollars that I got on Amazon that were slightly bigger, and so I'm just gonna go with that one. Just kind of, I think it's a little bit more to scale, but you could totally use the ones from the Dollar Tree. I just happen to have these already. So that's the one we're gonna use. That's the winner. So I am just gonna simply glue that back on. It's gonna cover up all that paper damage from taking off the other one. And you could use like a large shell as well. That'd be really pretty on this sign. I think anything is gonna be prettier than kind of the one that was already on there. Not a big fan of that look. Now I was thinking, I love the color of the sign and I love like the white writing on there, but I'm not really a fan of this color of frame. So I thought we would give that a quick makeover as well on this DIY. And we're gonna do that by mixing some ivory acrylic with some antique wax by Waverly because I wanna go for that like driftwood look, not that like bright yellow wood look that's already on there. So I'm just gonna go and kind of distress like that. Um, if some of that wood shows through, that's okay. It's gonna give me, you know, that same wood grain pattern, but it's gonna be definitely a softer, like driftwood finish in the final result. Just trying to be really careful because I don't have it taped off or anything, and I'm trying not to get paint on our cute little sign. And I hope you guys are excited about the Shore Living line at Dollar Tree this year. I know that I am. I, my store had maybe half of their set, maybe a third. And um, I recognized a lot of items from last year and the year before, but I also noticed a lot of new items. Now I want this to be a standing sign to sit on a shelf, not hanging. So I wanna cover the holes in the frame. And I thought if I use some of this Dollar Tree white rope, I can make a really cute little rope with like little knots at the end. It's gonna give me that like, you know, nautical touch with a little tied off nautical rope, but it's also gonna serve the purpose of covering up those holes there on the top. So I was trying to decide if I wanted to loop it like a hanger or just leave it straight. Honestly, I think it would be really cute both ways. And I also wanted to give a quick distress on the sign. I know I love it already, but if you distress it with a little bit of ivory, it's gonna kind of give you more of that coastal farmhouse vibe. You guys know, I distress everything. But you have to be really careful when you're distressing on this like printed paper from the Dollar Tree, um, cause you don't wanna damage that at all. I kind of decided I wanted it to be more of a handle so I'm just gonna glue the little knots straight on where the little holes are here at the top. And that is a much beachier little handle than what was on there before. And you could honestly hang it like that if you wanted to. I'm gonna use some of these little blocks that I get every spring at Five Below. They're giant Jenga blocks. They're great, you could use whatever you have, the Dollar Tree wood blocks, craft wood. Basically, I'm just gonna make a stand for mine. Just by gluing a couple of these on the back, you wanna make sure that you don't go all the way flush with the bottom, otherwise you're gonna have a sign that wants to tip over a little bit, but if you go almost to the bottom, it will slightly lean back, and it makes a really good stand for a thin sign like this to be able to stand up on its own. And this is how it turned out. And this is it displayed with my other coastal DIYs. I think it's really pretty and sweet and definitely beachy. I love it. Okay, next DIY, I picked up some of these little fish. I got a total of seven of these. 
and I love them because that blue, white, blue stripe, uh, they actually have some new fish this year that I just saw at my store that are bigger, chunkier. One was white, one was tan, so super hoping that they have these again this year because they are so cute. They had these in two different sizes last year, the long skinny fish and the big chunky fish. So what I'm going to do is make a school of fish. See if you get a whole bunch of them like this. You can put them all together and make like a large wall hanging. I was trying to decide if I wanted like, you know, the middle piece to be on top. Um, what was going to sit better on my wall. But I kind of like it tails up on all of them. And this was so easy to put together. And this is something that I leave up year round as well. I just use a little hot glue on each tail and about halfway down that like left row of fish in our school. I'm not gonna bother like covering the little holes in them. I think that's gonna be fine. And then this one, I'm just gonna attach with a little bit of hot glue here. I will have further reinforcement for that one and this one on top when I do the next row of fish because then I'm gonna glue them together with the tail of this one. I decided it looked better that way and it has been hanging in my home for a year and it is completely very stable. But I'm just gonna go ahead and glue those all together like that in that cool like fish school pattern now I was a little worried about stability. Um, and so I decided just to take one of these like long, um, I guess these are like the hot dog sticks from the Dollar Tree. Just any kind of a little tiny dowel. And I used my little miter scissors to cut down enough pieces for each joint. I thought this would provide me a little bit of wood that I could put in each one of those joints that I could secure it just a little bit more. So I'm just gonna hot glue those in there and it's gonna hot glue it to both fish just to make it a little bit sturdier. I don't know if this step was really necessary, but I thought this is something that I wanna keep up all the time. I definitely want it to be super sturdy. And so I'm gonna go ahead just and reinforce every single one of those joints with that dowel. And since I cut them down to size, you can't see any of this from the front when I have it hanging on my wall. So that should be the last one. Isn't it cute? Now I just have to figure out a way to hang it. And so I'm just gonna use some of that thicker jute twine and I'm gonna attach that to the back of the fishes here on this side. These are just so cute. I absolutely love how these turned out. I'm just gonna tie a knot in the twine and use my stapler. They're so thick, my staple actually does not go all the way through. So that's always a good sign. And this is one of my favorite short living line, um, DIYs that I've ever done. It's so cute. So if you see these and you wanna do a school, make sure you pick up at least seven of them. Cause I think seven looks really good all swimming in a school like that. And this is how it looks hanging in my home. Aren't they sweet? I think some of y'all were gonna make some nursery decorations with this. That would be really cute as well. Okay, the next one is this little, the sand in me with the little whale on top of it from the Shore Living line and a little starfish. Super cute, loving the wood. And I just wanna show you how I give mine a quick little makeover and make it a really cute piece of decor for my house. So I wanted my whale to be like this beachy blue color. So this is just some of the paint pens, I think from Target. And I am just gonna very kind of sloppily working in one direction color our little whale in. If any of that existing wood shows through, it's gonna be good because it's gonna give me that distressed coastal farmhouse beachy look that I'm going for. Just trying to give it a quick color all over. And I think that looks really cute. I like doing that rather than trying to paint it all in because now you can still see all of that wood grain in there and it gives you that coastal vibe. 
Now for the words, you know, as know, I love like white writing for a beachy decor. So I'm just going to use one of these little white Sharpie paint pens. And basically you're just coloring in between the lines. And the great thing about Coastal Farmhouse is that you're going to want it to look distressed. So you don't have to worry about getting it too perfect. If you get it pretty close, especially with all of this like cursive and script writing, you're going to be doing a pretty good job. And you know, some of my stores did not sell out of these. I've been kind of seeing these year round, but they are definitely a shore living item for sure. They have a couple different variations. And then the starfish. I do have other plans for the starfish, but I am going to go ahead and paint it white first to give me something to start with. And then I thought some of these little glass stickers from the crafter square would be great. I love using these on all kinds of surfaces and there's little starfish in here. And I think that would be really cute covering up the white starfish. Um, there's one just about the right size because it's going to provide a little texture and it's going to provide a little bit of blue down there to go with our little blue whale. Now I told you this one was going to be easy. That's basically all there is to it. So cute. I love it when they give me like a nice wood starter like that because it's going to go great with my decor. I display mine with one of the little blue mermaid tails also from the Dollar Tree. Super cute. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment to tell you about my Facebook group. I always have a link provided in the description below and my Facebook page is there as well. You can follow me over there. Or if you would rather do Instagram, TikTok, or Pinterest, my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube, and I would love to see you on any and all of those profiles. Okay, next DIY. Check out this cute little starfish wreath form from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree. We are going to make a cute version of this that's a little bit different than any of the other ones that I've seen. We're going to use some of this 11 foot white nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. And at first thought you would think, you know, you're just going to wrap it. But you know what? Star shape can be a little tricky to wrap, especially one with all of these rays going in kind of different directions. So what we're going to do is just hot glue the white rope onto the reform, just shaping out the shape of the star is what we're going to do first. So we're just gonna bend that on the ray and just keep gluing that around. I thought we could cover like all of the little metal parts with rope and then we can further decorate it from there. I kind of wanted a little bit of color to mine and so I'll show you how I did that as well. This reef turned out so cute, one of my favorites for sure. So just using that same piece of 11 foot, you're definitely going to be able to go all the way around here. And then you can cut it to size once you figure out exactly how long you need it to be. So that's our first row. Now we also have to cover up like this interior part. So just starting at the tip as low as you can go and gluing that up to the center. This first one I thought, you know, maybe I would go like straight across like that and cover up that little center section. Once I did it though, I decided I didn't really, I wasn't a big fan of that. So I am going to cut it and do like a separate piece for each side. Some of these pieces on the side are really short. And so you can just cut your pieces down to size. I just kind of measure mine first and cut it. That way, all I have to do is put some hot glue on there and glue that down to the reform. And you can kind of see the shape of this taking shape. Just a few more rungs and then we can start decorating this little guy. Now, whenever you hot glue to the reform like that, you are kind of going to have a little bit of a hot glue mess on the back. You can clean it up a little bit with hot glue. I thought one of these little Dollar Tree um, sand dollars would be perfect to cover the center part there where it's kind of crazy, but they're a little gray for my liking. So I'm just going to paint mine with a little ivory acrylic first just to brighten them up because I love a good ivory sand dollar. 
That looks way better. And look how cute that looks there. It's going to cover up all this like rough circle portion here. And it's going to give us a cute little center to our starfish. Now, I didn't want to stop there. I wanted to keep decorating. And these are the little seashells that come in the little glass bottles from the Dollar Tree that they have all the time. And I love these white ones with the little brown spots on them. I think they're just the cutest. So I just picked out a bunch of those. Even though those come in little glass bottles, I like storing them in those little toy organizers from Dollar Tree because you can they can be a little tricky to get out of the box when you're when you're crafting. So I'm gonna do like one at the base of all of my little short rows of rope there, kind of in a symmetrical pattern, and then about halfway down the little longer portions, also one at each tip. So kind of an all over with this seashell. You could use whatever seashell you have. It's going to be cute. But I really love this color. I think it looks really good with that Dollar Tree white rope. So just a few more here. And then I can show you how I decided to add a little bit of color to mine. It would be really cute as is if you had a colored door, especially if you had a blue door, that would be just beautiful. Um, while I still have it open, I'm gonna tie a little twine into a quick knot here just to make a little hanger before we get any further. But this is how we're gonna add color. I'm gonna use some of this beautiful light blue tool from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. I find my Crafter Square, some of them carry this all the time in a couple different colors. I thought this color would look nice, beachy and blue. Now the only issue with it is it's not very wide as you can see, but we're gonna make it work. You can always overlap it if you need be. I was trying to figure out how much blue I wanted. If I double it up like that, you're gonna get more blue. And so that's what I decided to go with was like a double layer of that tulle. So I'm just gonna glue that to the back of my wreath form. One section at a time. That's gonna cover up this part of the wreath. Just making sure it's glued down to all of the wreath forms tightly. Then I'm gonna double up another row here and kind of patchwork this together. I decided to go right next to the one that I just did and just do a slight overlap when I attach this to it. And as you can see, two like almost fill the entire starfish in, but I do have a little bit left that I do have to cover still. Just kind of cutting up that little area so they don't overlap quite so much. And then just a double layer over here at the very tip of this starfish ray. Now that I have it all glued on, um, this is a good time to trim all of the excess fabric off of it. That way you know that it's all gonna be covered and glued down tight. You won't have any holes showing through. And this material, super thin, super easy to cut. And it totally gave me that effect and from the front, you can't even see any of the seams, so don't really worry about that if you have to overlap yours. And isn't that cute? I just love how the starfish wreath turned out, and I hope you do too. I hope it gave you some crafting inspiration. And hopefully you can find this little wreath form at the stores soon. I know a lot of you are saying that your store doesn't have any, but don't worry, it's coming. They're trying to make room. They're trying to get through their Easter stuff first, right? So this is another one of the shore living signs. It's kind of cute. I thought we could decorate it a little bit to make it even cuter. Not a fan of the brown wood around there and not a fan of the glitter. So the first step is I'm just gonna use a white paint pen and I am gonna paint over all of their words. Love you to the beach and back with white paint. It's not gonna totally mask the glitter, but it's gonna do a really good job. 
just because the glitter definitely does not go with like a coastal decor, in my opinion. And I, but I do love the white writing. So this was a good fix for this problem. The other thing I didn't really like about this sign, I love the coral and the blue like slatted boards. I think that looks really cute. And I love the shape of the little mermaid swimming underneath of it. But I'm not a fan of like that mirror look on that. So that's something else that we're going to have to kind of DIY on this sign to make it even cuter. So we got all of our words painted and I always love to distress these signs. It's going to make it look more like a hand painted sign and less like some printed paper. So just working in one direction, making sure I focus a lot on the edges there as well. I'm just going to distress with a little chunky brush and some ivory acrylic. It's definitely going to give you that more coastal farmhouse vibe. You get too much on there, you can just kind of follow that up with a baby wipe until you get like the perfect level of distress. Now, sometimes these um, signs can be a little bit warped. So if you're painting them and you kind of notice that they're getting warped, you can usually fix that a little bit. Um, sometimes I even use heat on the back of mine, like my Cricut Easy Press to try to make them flatter. But I always kind of analyze them too before I buy them at the store. Sometimes they're really warped. So now I'm going to go in and mix a couple of colors together. This was, I think, turquoise and ivory to give me this pretty color of blue. And I thought that would be really cute to do the mermaid in. And I don't want to go too crazy with this. So I'm just using a little makeup sponge from the Dollar Tree and trying to sponge that on her. Just kind of an easier way to paint something thin like this without getting anything on the layer behind it. And doesn't she look so much prettier in color like that as compared to the mirror? Not a fan of that mirror look on there for sure. Once I get her blue, I do distress her ever so slightly with a little bit of ivory as well to give her that coastal vibe as well. Now, um, I am going to go over it with some matte Mod Podge just because I could kind of still see some of the glitter through the letters, but make sure your paint is dry before you do this step. But the matte Mod Podge I have found definitely does tone down the glitter as well because I really don't want it to be seen at all on this. And I do kind of go over the whole sign just to give it kind of an even finish. And then I'm also going to distress it a little bit more with some Antique Wax by Waverly just to give it a little bit more character, kind of working in one direction, kind of focusing on those letters, making them a little distressed as well. That's going to help mask the glitter too. I just wish they hadn't put glitter on this sign. Then all my problems would be solved, right? <laughs> now I wanted to replace the hanger with something a little bit cuter. I'm going to use some of the cube um, wood bead garland from the Dollar Tree and just try to make a new little hanger. This one is like kind of on like a really light, lightweight string. They're kind of tied in here at the end to make sure that they don't come off. So you do have to kind of unlace those to kind of get a workable Thing. And I'm going to do two of these signs today. And so I thought I would just cut this one in half and save the other one for the next sign. And you'll see that in my in another video. So then I'm just going to use that string to simply tie that would be garland. I'm just going to leave it natural like that to the top. Trying to make sure that I have an even number of beads. I find that it hangs better on my nail if I do. And this string is a little bit easier to tie off, I think, than the twine that some of those would-be garlands have. Now, I got to that point, I kind of thought I was done. And then I was like, you know, I forgot that I really don't like, like, that wood look around the edges. So... This is what we're gonna do to fix it. We're just gonna go in there with ivory and just kind of pulling it towards the inside 
and it kind of gave me like a feathered look, as you can see, which I think kind of gives it a nice distressed look. And we're going to do that kind of all the way around. Don't want it too crazy, just a little feathered like that. And I think that really brightened the sign up. The coral part can stay brown, that's fine. But I kind of really wanted it to have a white frame to go with the um, white words. Just kind of working around my hanger. I probably should have done this step first. But it's definitely looking way more coastal farmhouse, I think. It's going to go with my decor a lot better. And it's a nice size sign for $1.25. And this is how it turned out. Love you to the beach and back. Sorry, my photography is not great on this video. I don't know. Some of these things I didn't... Um, take individual pictures of last year. I don't know why. Okay, next DIY, we are gonna make a little coastal shelf to go on the back of my toilet <laughs> for my beachy bathroom. And I'm gonna make it out of two of these little skinny wall shelves from the Dollar Tree. You could use these, you could use craft wood, that would work as well. The reason I liked these is because they're really thick and I think they're going to hold up well. And they actually have um, on the back of the toilet to hold things and give it a little decorative touch as well. So two of those together is like the exact size of the back of my toilet. And then I'm going to use two of these little houses from the Dollar Tree short living section. And then I also had one left over from the Target dollar spot from one of those little um, tear tray starter kits, I think. But you could use any of these other options from Dollar Tree as well. They have so many house shapes. I like the fact that my houses are gonna be different sizes and I like that they're all a little bit different color. I do like these little houses. The only thing I don't like is that little foam glitter sticker on there. I think we can do better than that. You gotta be really careful when you remove these though. I'm just hitting it with a little heat from my heat gun and trying to pull it off as carefully as I can to get as little damage because that paper on there will rip. But I love these little houses, the little on beach time and it's a beach thing. I think this is gonna look good in my son's bathroom. Trying to clean up a little bit of the adhesive, but that's okay, we're gonna cover it up anyway with something a little cuter. I'm gonna use a Dollar Tree seashell, um, a little tiny starfish that I get on Amazon, and a Dollar Tree sand dollar for the other house to cover the star that was on there. I think I got that for, it was for 4th of July, I think. So we're just gonna glue down the little Dollar Tree sand dollar. Looks really cute on that little house. And I kind of wanted it to look like a row of beach homes on the back of my tray. So we're gonna glue down the little Dollar Tree um, seashell. And then this is a little tiny starfish. I get those on Amazon. Those are always linked in my shop below. And then I'm gonna kind of put this all together. The first step is attaching these two together. I'm just gonna do a bead of hot glue all the way down and glue these together. And got really lucky that the size was exactly what I needed. Now I also got some Dollar Tree craft wood um, so we can kind of make this into a tray. So I'm gonna cut this piece down the same size as that sign and just remove the tag on there. And that is gonna give me the back um, side of my tray and I can just attach it kind of like that. And so that's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna do a bead of hot glue all along and I didn't use any wood glue at all on this project and it is held up perfectly. It's very sturdy. And this, as you can see, that Dollar Tree craft wood is pretty um, thick too, even the thinner kind. And then I can line my little houses along the back of it like that. So I'm gonna take another piece of that same craft wood, cut it down to size, remove the tag, and we can put that on the front. Now I'm gonna leave it like this raw wood um, I think that's gonna give me a nice coastal vibe. It's okay that it's a little bit different finish from the shelves. It's 
going to make it look more unique, I think. So I just glued the front part of the tray down, just like the back. And now I have one more piece here. I can cut down sides for these. I'm going to get to go end to end on the sides. Kind of sandwich that in there. That way I can just glue that to the end. So I'm going to go here on the other side and cut down another piece. So super easy, just a little bit of hot glue on the two sides of the frame. And we're gonna sandwich that in there up against the bottom of the shelves where everything is kind of square, kind of flush. And we're gonna get this cute little tray. Who knew that a tray was so easy to put together, right? Okay, now it's time to make this cute. <laughs> I want to use those little houses, two of those and one of this little one fit in there just really nicely. And I kind of like the two big ones kind of next to each other and the smaller one at the end. Then I thought I should do a little fence all the way around to make it look like a little shore fence at the beach. And so I'm just going to do that with popsicle sticks. So I'm not going to bother cutting like a fence post, you know, like a point on it or anything. I think I'm just going to use like the arch that's already on there. I think that'll be really cute. So I'm going to use that one for reference and we're going to go through and cut down a bunch of these two size. You can definitely get two out of one popsicle stick. And I'm just going to cut down enough to go all the way around like all four sides. It's going to provide like a decorative fence touch. But it's also going to make the sides of the tray a little bit higher and make it a little bit more functional. So I thought I would give myself kind of a little line here to kind of look like a little wire connecting the fence together. Um, I thought about actually stringing wire around them, but I thought I just kind of wanted to look a little bit of a line not so much the actual wire sticking up. So I just kind of lay mine all on there first so I can kind of get my spacing the way I want it. I'm not gonna measure anything. We're just gonna start gluing those on all the way across. Isn't that a quick, a simple fence? I thought that was really easy. And it's gonna give you that same raw wood that we used that's in the craft wood, so it goes together nicely. We're just gonna leave that raw wood as well. This toilet is kinda like right next to the shower in this bathroom, so it is gonna have a little bit of moisture going on. So I definitely want this to be as sturdy as possible. And then we're gonna just start hot gluing our little houses to the back of that craft wood. And they don't have too much of a roof line on there um, to worry about the two next to each other. They just fit in there kind of like a glove. That looks super cute. Then I was thinking, you know, I really do need to keep doing my fence all the way around. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and cut enough popsicle sticks just for the sides. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a double amount so I can do the other side as well. And same thing, we're just gonna glue them, kind of spacing them out just by eye. And I love working with popsicle sticks because they're so easy to cut. You can just cut them with some heavy duty scissors. Okay, check this out. We got our little tray for the back of the toilet. And you know, I kind of thought it still kind of needed that line around it and I didn't think you could really see it with the paint. So instead of wire, I thought that really thin twine from the Dollar Tree might work. And so I just glue that to the back and wrap that all the way around. And I thought that was the final touch. This holds like all the things that are like normally on the back of the toilet. And I'm just kind of gluing that down in front so it kind of stays in place. But that's gonna also help holding all the popsicle sticks on there. But again, I've had no problems with this falling apart at all. 
It's the perfect size for some toilet paper or whatever else you have sitting on the back of mine. I think we actually have reptile bath stuff there because my son has a bearded dragon. And this is how it turned out. Isn't it super cute? I love it. It's decorative and it is, serves a purpose. Okay, next DIY is gonna be really easy. I'm gonna take one of these little relax words from the Dollar Tree. This is the one that's like the white wood painted. And I thought we would make this into a little sign. Again, we're gonna use some craft wood from the Dollar Tree. This is kind of like the chunky slats. And I thought we would make a little chunky sign by putting several of these together to make a little sign. Um, for the back of the relax, just to kind of make it more of, of a substantial piece. If you guys have seen any of the Shore Living items, um, I noticed I actually bought the rope ones that spell out the word beach. They also have it spell out relax again this year. Um, and it's really cute. I got the beach ones. I, that was my favorite. But I'm just gonna glue the three chunky slats side by side. It's gonna be, give me the perfect size frame. Then I thought I would just cover it with burlap that's gonna look fun and beachy. I'm gonna use one of those six inch burlap rolls from Walmart. Um, but you know, they also have burlap rolls from the Dollar Tree now as well. And I just kind of want it to look like it's completely covered in burlap. So I am going to cut off like the little finished edge and cut it down to size for my new little sign. And you could do this with a Dollar Tree sign. Um, I thought just creating my own, I'm going to have a blank canvas and I love working with that Dollar Tree craft wood. So there's our piece of burlap. I thought that was going to be just a really fun beachy background for this relax sign. This DIY is going to be super easy to put together. So to glue it on, we're just going to use Mod Podge. Try not to get it everywhere, but I want like a fairly thick layer of that since we are gluing down fabric. And you know, the burlap has all the holes in there, so it's gonna kind of seep through the holes nicely, and that's gonna help glue it down too. Just kind of spreading that all out, and I think that's the perfect little beachy background. We're gonna give that a quick dry, and we can start putting this little sign together. Our little relax, see how it fits on there just perfectly. And the two signs together are both kind of chunky, so definitely gives me a nice chunky sign in the end. And we're just gonna do hot glue kind of all over to make sure it's good and secure to our side. So you see these, you kind of think they are a standalone sign, but you can definitely build them out like this and, and make them really cute and more substantial. And we're just gonna leave that craft wood the natural wood, it definitely goes with the coastal farmhouse vibe. And I really like the contrast of the white letters there against the burlap. Relax, you're at the beach, right? I know some of you guys say that you can't, you know, do this coastal decorating because you don't live near the beach, but you don't need to live anywhere near the beach. The beach can live in your heart no matter where you live. I decorated coastal even when I lived in the Midwest. <laughs> Okay, next DIY is one of these little galvanized metal pans from the Dollar Tree. I mixed some of that Caribbean blue with ivory to give me that really soft blue. We're gonna paint it just because I don't think they're really pretty in the galvanized metal. And so I thought we'd do a distressed paint job all over. This one has the little seahorse on it. And I did just see these in my store. They brought these back this year. I saw the seahorse. I saw the starfish and I saw a new one. They had one with a mermaid tail, super cute. So kind of just trying to paint all over, but leaving the little seahorse unpainted, which it's kind of just stamped on there. So you're not really gonna get like a really clean line there, but I do like the little jute twine at the top. So I left that on there. And then it does have like a little indentation um, 
for these little starfish, but you can't really see them. So I'm just gonna use like a turquoise blue paint pen to kind of paint those and kind of bring that color out a little bit on that. And we're actually not gonna use this as a planter. We're actually gonna fill this with like beach vines and you can kind of do whatever you want with these, but I do like them painted better. Now I thought the starfish needs to be white. So I'm just using a Sharpie white paint pen and going all in there and trying to color him in. Thought it would be easier to paint like the metal than to try to cover up the blue. And if a little metal shows like around the twine at the top or around the little seahorse, it's gonna be fine. I follow that up with a slight distress all over with a little bit of ivory. Again, for that little coastal farmhouse vibe. And then I go in with ivory and kind of go over the white, the stark white um, from the seahorse as well, just because I think the ivory is a little bit softer than the bright white. And again, there's not a real defined edge on this. So you can kind of, you're kind of um, at liberty. <laughs> I'm just trying to get it painted the best that I can. Looks good, time to fill it up. I thought I would just start with some newspaper just to fill most of the pot up. Cause you're not gonna be able to see that part anyway, right? And you could use whatever. And then I don't really want the newspaper to be visible. Um, so I thought I would use a little Spanish moss. It's gonna kinda look like, you know, give me that dried seaweed effect for my beach treasures. And then I thought we'd fill it up with Dollar Tree sand dollars, starfish, and seashells. So cute. Kind of trying to find like a good variety to kind of make it look like a pail full of beach finds. When the only beach I've been to was the Dollar Tree. <laughs> And so that's just another way you can use those little planters and you don't even have to have a plant. You can just kind of fill it up with treasures. Which I always love displaying. I take every opportunity. Um, my husband built me a coffee table that displays all my shell and like starfish collection out in my Florida room. And now I just got a new coffee table that also kind of has a display thing on one side of it and I need to fill it up with some treasures. This is how it turned out. I don't have very good photography on this one, but I got a pretty good look here at the side of it. And yeah, sorry about the resolution of this. I don't know what I was thinking. I took a picture of the whole cabinet, but I didn't really take a picture of the individual items. Sorry about that. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. I wanted to let you guys know that I have introduced memberships on my channel. It's a quick, easy way to support me as a creator here on YouTube. It's $4.99 a month. You're gonna get early access to new videos like this one and some other perks. And I already have two members, Coastal Couple and Karen O'Haran. Thank you guys so much for supporting my YouTube channel. I appreciate you both so much. And I also wanted to give a shout out to these crafty beach bums that have sent me super thanks, super chats, cash app, and buy me a coffee donations. Your all support means a lot and I really appreciate each and every one of you. Okay, it's time for the final reveal. Don't forget to like, comment your favorite DIY below, and don't forget to subscribe. Vision that I saw
So much for making it all the way to the end of this video if you'd like more crafty beach youtube thinks that you might enjoy this video right here